In this video, we're talking about division of radicals or division of square roots. And when we're dealing with division of radicals, the formula we need to remember is that the square root of a over the square root of b, in other words, when we have a fraction with a square root in the numerator and a square root in the denominator, we can combine those into one square root and just use a over b inside of the square root. So in this first example here, we have the square root of 100 over the square root of 4. There's a couple ways we can go about this. Using the formula here, we can say that this is equal to the square root of 100 over 4. In other words, we can take the values here and put them inside one square root instead of two square roots. And then we would just simplify the fraction inside. So we know that 100 over 4 is equal to 25. So this would simplify to the square root of 25 because we simplify 100 over 4. And then from here, we just take the square root of 25 and we know that that's equal to 5. So we could do it that way or we could deal with each square root separately. So instead of bringing 104 into one square root, we could deal with them individually. So we know that the square root of 100 is 10, so we'd end up with 10 here. We know that the square root of 4 is 2, so we'd have 2, and we could say 10 over 2 is equal to 5. Notice that in both cases, we get the same answer. We always get 5. That's because it's going to work either way as long as we do the math correctly. So whatever's easiest for you, deal with the square root separately, and then do the division of whole numbers here, or pull both numbers into a fraction inside of one square root, and and then simplify that fraction, taking the square root later. So again, two ways you can go about it. Let's look at a second example. We have the square root of 24 over the square root of 18. Let's go ahead and deal with the square roots separately. So if we look at the square root of 24 here, we know that that's the same thing as the square root of 6 times 4 because 6 times 4 is 24. So really, we just have the square root of 24. We haven't changed anything. In the denominator here, we have the square root of 18, which we can say is the square root of 6 times 3. 6 times 3 is 18, so we just have the square root of 18. We haven't changed anything there either. Now we need to remember the square root rule that tells us that if we have the square root of a times b under one square root, we can change that to the square root of a times the square root of b. In other words, we have two values multiplied together underneath one square root. We can pull them out into their own square roots. So what this becomes then is the square root of 6 times the square root of 4. We separate 6 and 4 into their own square roots in the numerator divided by the square root of 6 times the square root of 3. The reason it's interesting to do it this way is because now at this point we can say that the square root of 6 in the numerator will cancel with the square root of 6 in the denominator. Square root of 6 over square root of 6 is equal to 1, so really we just have 1 times the square root of 4 over the square root of 3. Those two cancel with each other, and we're just left with square root of 4 over square root of 3. Now we know that the square root of 4 is 2, so we can simplify the numerator and say 2 over the square root of 3. We can't take the square root of 3, so you might think we're done with this problem. But as a rule, you never want to leave a square root in the denominator of your final answer. So the way that we get the square root out of the denominator here, we do what's called rationalizing the denominator. And we just want to multiply by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3, which is the same thing as multiplying by 1, right? The square root of 3 over the square root of 3 is 1, so we're just multiplying by 1. We're not changing the value at all. But when we do this, we're going to get in the denominator when we multiply across the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, which will be the whole number 3. So then our final answer becomes 2 root 3 over 3, we've rationalized the denominator, meaning we've removed the square root from the denominator, so this is an acceptable final answer. Let's look at the square root of 48 over the square root of 25. We want to look for perfect squares. We know that the square root of 25 is just 5. That's an easy one. That's a perfect square. So we can call this here 5. Now we have the square root of 48 over 5. What about the square root of 48? Well, we know 4 is a perfect square. It's a perfect square of 2. So we can go ahead and pull out 4, and we can call this the square root of 4 times 12 all over 5. 4 times 12 is 48. We haven't changed anything here. But now that we have it this way, we can say square root of 4 times the square root of 12 all over 5. And the square root of 4 is 2. So we get 2 square root of 12 all over 5. Now we always want to simplify as much as possible, so we need to see if we can keep going. 12 we know is the same thing as 4 times 3. So we can change this to 2 times the square root of 4 times 3 all divided by 5. And now we can separate into different square roots and say the square root of 4 times the square root of 3 over 5. 
and we know that the square root of 4 is 2, so this will become 2 when we multiply it by the 2 in front here. 2 times 2 is 4, so what we end up with is 4 root 3 all over 5. We can't take the square root of 3 because 3 is a prime number. We don't have a square root in our denominator, so we've simplified this as much as possible. The denominator is rationalized, so we can call this our final answer. So this is going to work always with whole numbers. What about when we start involving a variable? And this is just a slightly more advanced example, but it's really going to be no different than the others. So here we have the square root of 30x divided by the square root of 10x. Well, the easiest way to go about this problem is to use this rule up here and put the 30x and the 10x into one square root. So this is going to be equal to the square root of 30x divided by 10x. Now we can just simplify our fraction. x divided by x is going to be 1, meaning these x's here are going to cancel, and we're just left with 30 over 10. 30 divided by 10 is 3, so this is nothing but the square root of 3, and it's as simple as that. The square root of 3 would be our final answer for the square root of 30x over the square root of 10x. So a bunch of different ways to go about this, but that's how you deal with division of square roots.